In this video, we're going to talk about vector addition using the component method. To do this, let's draw two vectors head to tail. The first vector we can call A1. And the second vector we can call A2. If I draw the components of these vectors, they'll make right triangles. A1x a1y, a2x, a2y. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the x and the y components and I'm going to put them on the x and the y axes. So the a2x component we'll erase and then we'll draw it right here. A x and then the a1y component we'll get rid of and draw it right here a1y then we'll take that a2y and draw it right there a2y now you'll notice that these components a1y and a2y a1x and a2x they're basically being added together and they also point to the x and the y location of this point right here, which is where our resultant, or our vector sum, we would call this the sum of the vector sigma a, uh, is, is where it points. So what we're saying is that a1 plus a2y gives me the y component of my sigma a, my vector sum. And the a1x plus a2x gives me the x component of my vector sum, or the, the sigma a. So that's like saying the x component of my resultant is a1x plus a2x. And the y component is a1y plus a2y. Then I use those to make the components of my resultant which of course I could draw, I'll make it really bold, as a right triangle where this would be sigma AX and this would be sigma AY. So when we do this, when we add the components together, the A1X plus A2X, the A1Y plus A2Y, we're using what's called the component method. Um, and using the sigma AX and sigma AY, we'd be able to find the magnitude of this resultant vector. Um, we would say sigma ax squared plus sigma ay squared. And we'd be able to find the angle. Tangent inverse of sigma ay over sigma ax. So this method is really useful um, if we have multiple vectors, and it's sort of hard to see how they would add together head to tail, um, or if we have vectors that don't lie really nicely on some sort of grid that's pre-drawn for us. Um, and when we're working with the x and the y components of the vectors, what's really helpful is if we basically make a chart, like an x and a y component chart. And then we go through and we label x and y for the different vectors, a1, a2, maybe there's an a3, maybe there's an a4. And after we do that, we can think, okay, what do these all sum to? And that would give us the sum of our x components. What do the y's sum to? And that will give us the sum of our y components. Let's do some examples, and this will make a lot more sense. Find the magnitude and direction of a1 plus a2 plus a3. Okay, so that means that we're trying to find the sum, the magnitude of these vectors which means if I can figure out, that's a bad sigma, uh, if I can figure out what the x sum is and square it, then find the y sum and square it, I can get that magnitude. And the same for um, theta. I can use tangent inverse of the sum of all the y components divided by the sum of all the x components. So let's make a, a chart for ourselves, an x and a y chart x, y, and then we'll go through and we'll list the different vectors. 
All right, let's start with a1. Vector a1's x component is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, positive 4. And a1's y component is 1, 2, positive 2. So I put those components in my little chart. Then I move on to the second vector. I've got no x component because it doesn't go left or right, so I put 0. And then a positive 2 for the y component because it goes up 2. Basically, it is a y vector because it only points up. Okay, let's move on to 3. 3 would have a negative 2x and a negative 2y. So I include that negative for the x and the y. Okay, great. Now I'm going to figure out the sum of those x's. Okay, so the sum of the x components is 4 plus negative 2, or 2. The sum of the y components is 2 plus 2 plus negative 2, or 2. So now I've figured out the x and the y component of my resultant. And just to check, if I add all these vectors head to tail, so Here's a2, and then a1 would go down like this. Sorry, a3 would go down like this. So if I add them head to tail, I should get a sum, a vector sum, sigma a, that has 2 for an x, check, and 2 for a y, check. So again, I didn't have to draw this head to tail, like graphically. I just can make a chart and, and solve it. Um, and it will tell me without doing the head-to-tail method that, yeah, my, my net of these vectors is going to be at 2, 2, positive 2, and positive 2. Okay, so to find the magnitude of A, I would do the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is 2.8. And to find the angle, I do tangent inverse of the y over the x, which in this case it's just 2 over 2, and I'm going to get... 45 degrees. Okay, so in this way, I was able to quickly come up with the magnitude and the direction of those three vectors. Let's do this for um, two vectors without a coordinate system, uh, that it would be rather difficult for us to quickly get x and y just by looking at the graph. So here we go. Find the magnitude and direction of a1 plus a2. Okay, so I can kind of see that if I take a2 and, you know, add it down here, I'm going to get some sigma a that looks like that. But without a grid, it's hard for me to, to do this. So it's going to be much easier for us to just set up an x and a y for our two vectors, a1 and a2. Now, to get a1 x... We'll call that a1x. I'm going to need to find the um, x component using this magnitude and direction, which remember um, the x components and the y components are the length of the vector. So like for a1, it's, that's 4.1. For a2, it's 3.6 times cosine of the angle. Um, and as long as I use a unit circle angle, meaning an angle in reference to the positive x-axis, then I can use cosine for x. And y is a times sine of theta. So I'm going to do this for x and for y. And I'll just do this with my calculator. OK, so for a1, my a is 4.1, so 4.1. Uh, and my angle is 14. So the x component will be cosine of 14. OK, so that gives me 3.1. 978, we're going to round that to 4. And I'll write that in my chart. 4. If I wanted, I could write it here for me to see. But, you know, let's just keep track of all this in our chart. Okay, now let's work on the y component. The y component is going to be a, which again is 4.1, times sine of the angle, which is 14. So 4.1 sine of 14 gives me 0.99, which I'm just going to go ahead and call that 1. Now, I need to double check 
and make sure that I have the correct positive x and y. And for a1, I go to the right, and then I go up, so yes, they should both be positive. Okay, so now let's look at a2. Before we can work with a2, I need to change this angle, um, because this angle is in reference to this left axis right here, this left going axis. But we, if we want to use sine and cosine, we just want to get the unit, uh, unit circle angle. So that would be this angle right here which would be 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus this 33.7. Um, and we can rewrite that as 180, which is 90 plus 90 plus 3, 3 um, That gives me 213, 13.7 degrees. Okay, so in my graphing calculator, when I find the x and the y component, I can use cosine for x and sine for y, as long as I use 213. So let's do that. Um, 3.6 is our a, so we would do 3.6 cosine. And again, I'm not using 33.7, I'm using 213.7. This should give me a negative number, which it does, negative 2.99. Now that makes sense because the x component of this vector points to the left because this vector points to the left and down. So negative 3 is my x, which I'm going to write right here, negative 3. Okay, then the, uh, the y component is going to be 3.6 sine of 213.7, which again should give me a negative because this vector points down and I should expect a negative y component. Boom, negative y component. So negative 1.99 or basically negative 2. So we'll store that here, negative 2, as our y component. Okay, so now we have everything that we need to find the x component for our sum and the y component for our sum. The x is going to be 4 plus negative 3, which is a positive 1. Okay, so positive 1. And then the y component is going to be negative 3 plus negative 2, which is just negative Oh, wait, sorry, did you see the mistake I made? 1 plus negative 2, which is negative 1. So now if I draw that vector, like roughly, I know it's going to point down because it'll have a positive 1 and a negative 1 component. And I'm going to find the magnitude by doing the square root of 1 squared plus negative 1 squared, which gives me the square root of 2, or we'll write that as 1.4. And tangent inverse of this angle is actually going to be negative 1, the y component, over positive 1. Sorry, theta equals. And that's going to give me um, negative 45 degrees. Now, here, we'll, we'll show that in our calculator. Second and negative 1 divided by 1 it gives me negative 45. Remember that tangent inverse um, in these kind of graphing calculators, it gives you correct angles for the first and the fourth quadrant, which our, our sum is in the fourth quadrant. So that is the correct unit circle angle for this vector, because that would be right there, 45 degrees, not above, but below the positive x-axis, which is why it's a, a negative, because it's going um, clockwise. Great, so that's the magnitude and direction of the vector. If I wanted to write this in the appropriate notation, I can write 1.4 comma negative 45 degrees, and boom, I'm a genius. And I just used this little trick right here with a chart to help me organize components and quickly be able to sum vectors um, in these, these difficult situations. So basically, you would use the component method if you don't have a pre-drawn grid, like this problem, um, or if you have so many vectors that you you need to keep track of all of their x and y components. So that's the component method. You are awesome and great and fantastic, and this video is over.